Our cards module is looking pretty great at this point in time. We can create the deck, shuffle it, deal it, save it, load it, all that kind of great stuff. So remember the, the goal here, the idea behind the cards deck was that maybe we create this module and we distribute it off to other developers. And our developers take the code in here and they're just having a good time at the command line. You know, they manually create a deck and they shuffle it and they deal cards and all that kind of good stuff, right? So that's kind of the use case of this cards module right here. So maybe we ship it off to like a million developers and they're all enjoying it, they're running at the command line, but we start to collect a little bit of feedback from these developers and there tends to be one very popular point of feedback. It turns out that the vast majority of users are always running the same three functions in a row. They create a deck, so they create a deck, they shuffle it, and then they deal a hand from it. So they keep on doing the same three things over and over and over again. It sure would be great if our customers or you know, the de developers out there who are using this could call just one method and get back a shuffled hand with some number of cards rather than always having to call the same three methods in a row. So put simply, we should add another function to the cards mod module that creates a deck, shuffles it, and returns a hand back. So basically call create deck, shuffle, and create hand all in a row. So let's put this method together. I'm going to add a new function at the bottom. We'll call it, uh, how about create hand, because that's really what it does. I'm going to assume that it has one argument, which is going to be the number of cards that this thing should deal out. So let's say it's a hand size, like so. Now, the before we work on any implementation here, I want to check out a diagram that kind of details the different methods that we need to call from inside this create hand function. Okay, so let's check out a diagram. All right, so this is a diagram of the different calls that we would need to make to kind of deal with this or call all three methods or all three functions in one function. We start off by calling cards.createDeck. That's going to create a list of cards, right? We then pass the list of cards into cards.shuffle. Cards.shuffle is going to produce a new list of cards. Then finally, we pass that to cards.deal along with the hand size. And then we get back finally our list of cards, which will be you know, like maybe five cards that are randomly shuffled. So in one go, we want to call create deck, shuffle, deal. And in the case of deal, we want to also make sure we pass in the hand size over here. So it turns out that this pattern of passing in some amount of data from method to method, you know, like call this thing, pass the result here, pass the result here, then get the feedback over here, is so common in Elixir that the language has its own operator, which is called the pipe operator, to set up this chain of method calls. So let's try to make use of this pipe operator to implement, implement our create hand method. Just to make sure that we have a solid understanding of the pipe operator, we'll first write out our order of calls without the pipe, and then we will refactor our code to use it. So let's give this a shot. We're going to call all three methods in a row manually. So I'm going to make a deck, like so. I'm then going to redefine my deck as cards.shuffle deck. Then finally, I will say cards.deal deck hand size. And really, at the very end here, I would really call this a hand, right? So we create our deck, we assign the result to deck, we then shuffle the deck, we pass in our deck, get back a new deck, and then finally we deal from it and get back a hand size. So we've got three calls in here, all just very repetitive code, super repetitive. Take a special note of the fact that we are repeating the word deck just all over the place as well. Okay, so this is what the result looks like without the pipe operator. So let's now continue the next section and do a little bit of refactor here to use this new mysterious pipe operator.